Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to another chat with Matt. Let me ask you this question. How important do you think sales compensation is to the behavior of sellers? If the compensation plan is done in a certain way, is it going to mean that you sell more of a certain thing that you're you're trying to reward or not? Does it have a massive impact on the way salespeople operate? Well, today we're going to find out. So I'm delighted on today's chat to be uh, to be joined by Steve Grossman. Steve, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. It'd be good to, to hear a bit about you, actually, and why we're talking around compensation on this chat today. Okay, I could, uh, I'll give you the short version. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been working with sales organizations for well over 30 years and uh, doing both you know, broad transformation work uh, but also some sort of point solutions, one of which that's the most common across all the transformation work is the sales compensation um, plan or, or, or process. Um, and as you just said, you, you, almost, you can't talk to a senior sales leader or a CEO about the sales organization without comp coming up at the top of the list. So it's, it's, it's always a part of every project that we do, but it's not the only thing on many projects. No, I'm, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your perspective and your insights about how it how it does affect and drive behavior and of course the profitability and success of an organization but before we get to that 2020 has been a bit of a unusual year to say the least uh, what's your perspective on the the business market as it stands today um still not um you know certainly not great um it's still, in many respects, the way it was back in April and May. You've got you know, some industries and markets that are doing quite well. Uh, some parts of tech are doing quite well. You know, those serving the, the home office um, yeah. uh, tsunami, if you will. Um, then you've got those serving the, you know, the restaurant business and the hotel business and travel business that are getting you know, killed, uh, to say the least. And you've got some that um, are in, in between. Some of their businesses, uh, if they're selling into maybe aerospace, they're they're soft in that division, but they're doing well in medical products. So a lot of a lot of variation. Um, to me, it's still um, a very unpredictable world, an unpredictable market out there. And when you say unpredictable, that means from a sales standpoint, it's tough to set goals. It's tough to you know, have the credibility behind the goals. It's tough to think, you know long term is now maybe two quarters at the most yeah so it, it's that kind of um uncertainty unpredictability and and therefore the need for a lot of agility going i hate to use that word because it's 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 overused now but you need to be agile and really everything we're doing with the sales organization in particular pay uh, and we started this chat today with that very question you know how much does sales compensation drive the behavior of sellers of sales managers What's your perspective on that before we go into the, the sort of the, the, the meat around sales compensation? Um, I, I, whenever I'm asked that, that question, Matt, I think, uh, to me, the best way to sum it up is, is that the biggest problem with sales compensation is it works. So you got to make sure that it's designed the way it needs to be designed to meet management's objectives, um, as opposed to just lining the pockets of salespeople. So it, it's critical because pe salespeople react to it. And the reaction can be, you know, overly aggressive. Uh, it can, they can ignore it because it, it doesn't have any meaning to them because there are no goals or the goals are, are so unpredictable, it doesn't matter. But they react to it um, and they react to it in, in the proper way. They react to it the way it's laid out and the way it, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you'd expect them to. It's, they're very, they make very rational decisions about how they spend their time, how aggressive they are, how motivated they are, and what they do with that time and it all comes back through the sales compensation plan. That's not the only thing that drives them, as, as we all know, but it is certainly one of the one of the um, most visible critical elements. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly I've, I've met thousands of salespeople over the years, and of course, the compensation and um, and how they can how they can affect it through what they do is a massive motivator. The motivation might not be the end result, i.e., the money, because that does vary person to person, but making sure that our system in a positive way is certainly a driving factor. What do you think is some of the pitfalls? So where you've seen in organizations compensation not done well, what are some of the pitfalls that organizations fall into? 
Yeah, it's usually under the heading of a, 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 the, the alignment isn't, isn't there. And again, that's an overused word um, as well, but um, alignment in terms of, of, of management, management has a set of objectives and they need to meet that. And the sales compensation plan is one of the stronger tools they have to do that. So if a senior management team has an objective of, you know, growth, um, profitability, uh, perhaps penetration in certain segments or certain product groups, that those elements have to filter down into that street salesperson. Uh, maybe not all of them. Um, you've got the, the right balance between what the salesperson's metrics are for his or her pay plan and what the sales manager's metrics are. They don't need to be the same, which is a, which is a big flaw. Most organizations, they have them the same. They need to be complementary. Um, but why waste all the money on the same metric when you can sprinkle the money so or balance rebalance the money across a number of metrics and then in total you're getting senior management's objectives accomplished. So the objectives aren't aligned um, with 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 sales with leadership in, in general. The sales managers' pay, pay plans are too much like the sales reps' pay plans. Um, the other element that we see is most sales organizations don't pay their high performers enough. And whenever I, I say that to a client, you can just look and you can tell who the HR people are in the group, uh, who the finance people are in the group and who the sales people are in the group when I say that. Um, right. But, it, but it, that's what we find. There's too much or, or there's too little variation in uh, payout levels, pay levels for outstanding performance. So you get a very narrow distribution as opposed to a broader distribution. Um, and you need those high performers really getting paid well, not just for their motivation, but it motivates the quote average performer. They see what they their their, their fellow um, salespeople can earn when they really have an outstanding year. That should motivate them. So in in essence, you get a double win because you get um, uh, the median performers striving to do better, yeah. and then critically for the top performers, you get them to stay in the business rather yes. than go elsewhere because yep. that's a major factor we know that the average cost of uh, recruiting a, a top seller is about a million dollars it's a big price so if you get to retain that talent through your through the way that they're paid um, that seems like a sensible thing to me so if we from your experience and if we come up to a 10,000 foot view down looking down um, and let's say we're we as an organization or any of our clients we're working with as an organization are looking to move from a product-based sale to a solution-based sale. So as part of their transformation, they're looking to change the way they work because they have to, the market's shifting, the way buyers are buying is changing. What would you do in relation to compensation? Again, not, not in the detail, but 10,000 foot view looking down, yeah. what would be some of the steps that you would follow to build the right compensation plan for an organization? Okay, um, it, it, a, a typical scenario uh, and moving from, you know, more product focused to solution focused, a little bit broader, higher value focus is um, you look, if you look in the eyes of the customer, um, what they see coming in there to, to work with them, whether it's Zoom or, or face to face, um, is, is someone that's, that's going to be uh, guided by their compensation plan. So the, when you go from product to solution, each sale probably is going to take longer time um, to go to sell that solution. There are more people involved on, on, on the customer's uh, decision making. There may be more people involved on the supplier side, some of the engineering and applications people. Uh, but the, the customer um, is going to have multiple people involved. All of that takes more time. So if you've got a compensation plan that's <clears throat> motivating a churn, sort of a numbers game, uh, the more calls I make, the more sales I make, the more more I'm going to make. Um, the salesperson's there for a relatively short period of time and is off to the next conquest. So one of the things you have to do is, is allow the pay plan to enable the salesperson to be okay spending the time with that customer to make that more complicated, deal, more complex deal, more value deal, higher price deal, um, longer buying process. So what tends to happen is you need to increase the or change the mix between base and variable. So the base salaries are going to take a higher percentage of the total. It doesn't mean you change the the high the high end of it at all, or even the target earnings, or the upside. You still need to have a rich upside, 
but the mix between base and salary probably needs to change. So I'm taking the time to spend with you as a customer to develop that more complex uh, solution that takes more time. That's probably the number one, if there is a number one. Um, when, when, when companies go from product to solution, they say, okay, we, we, we've trained our people, we've created the right solutions. Why aren't they selling these solutions? They're selling products one at a time, still selling products one at a time. Well, they didn't change their pay plan. And the sales per person is doing what the rational person would do. So actually that's, that's really closely aligned to process. And, and have you seen over the years where, where some organizations are trying to make that transition they still think in the same way in terms of customer again, sales cycle length, and that holds them back. Have you witnessed that? Yes, yes, quite, quite a bit. Because uh, most people um, at the senior levels of management kind of grew up in, in that industry, if not that company. Um, and that's how that industry has paid over the decades. So to get senior management to say, yeah, we have to change the pay plan. Is, is quite often more difficult than to get the salesperson to be comfortable with a new pay plan. Okay. Just because of the dynamic of, of you know, it's, it's inertia, that they, they're used to it, they've seen it work well, and they just, they're just really concerned when I, when I increase the salary of a salesperson, they, they say, well, it's gonna demotivate the salesperson, they're not gonna be as aggressive, and that's just a fallacy. If you've got the right people, you've trained them right, you're managing them correctly, you can adjust the salary. I mean, you don't want to do it every year, obviously, but you can increase the percentage of, of total cash that's in salary to accomplish these strategic um, things like uh, evolving more towards solution selling. And you're not going to demotivate that salesperson. Again, if you've got the right people in place. Right, okay. So in the typical engagement that you have with a customer, um, they give you a call, they say, Steve, we really need to improve our compensation plan because we don't feel it's working. What would your typical engagement cycle be between that first engagement and then, you know, implementation of a new plan? And again, just a, a high level view. Okay. Um, they, they tend to run uh, what you just described uh, from three to six months in calendar time. Yeah. Uh, to do something like that. Um, you asked me to explain a little bit about the process in those three to yeah, six months. Yeah, without going into the detail, because yeah. of course I don't want you to give your pot of gold away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but equally, uh, just just as you go through that, what would those high level blocks be to get from where you are today to where you want to be okay. from a compensation perspective? Okay, well, the, the approach is, is really focused on um, what we've been talking about. And that's really understanding what's the real role of that salesperson today? Yeah. What, is it, what does it need to be moving forward? So understanding that role, getting input from salespeople, getting input from customers. You know, what do they see and how does it compare to other, either other competitors or other adjacent suppliers? Um, and a lot of um, internal data analysis and then making sure things are matched to that sales, overall business and sales strategy. And that takes, you know, it takes interviews, it takes maybe some internal and external surveying. But uh, the most important part though is really the process with the senior leadership team to take that team through the thought process of what are the issues with today's plan? Where do you need to be? And let's get the organization there. But the, the, the time spent with the senior leadership team is, is probably the most valuable time in, in that process. And that's quite often we're told, don't worry about leadership there with us. You gotta get involved leadership in the process, not just report back, here's where we are, here's where we're going. Okay, makes sense. Does that answer, answer the question, Matt? Yeah, it does, absolutely, okay. absolutely. It's, uh... Uh, you know, a very consultative approach in what you do um, because you, it's all about gap analysis from where you are to yep. where you want to be. And I think that top down uh, involvement of a leader is yep. really important and actually a different angle to, to understand it from the customer's perspective as well is yep. really valuable. Yeah, and just two, two other things if I could just to insert that. I mean, the whole focus of the work is understanding what impacts the performance of the salesperson because whatever impacts the salesperson's performance is gonna impact the performance of the compensation plan. So you need to understand that. And then the other key part of that is the, the sales management process. How strong the process is, how strong the sales managers are, because you've got a kind of a trade-off. Um, a weak management process requires a relatively complex, complex compensation plan. A strong management process, you don't need a complex compensation plan 
to get get the job done, to get people performing in the right way. So you have to have things in the right balance. And then the earlier point about making sure the senior leadership team is in the process, not just observing the process. Makes sense. So if you could give one top tip to a sales organization today, when they're thinking about their compensation plan, because this podcast is all about marginal gains, what one thing can we can we give to our listeners and our readers? What would your top tip be? Um, <clears throat> again, that word agility, be agile, keep the pay plans on a quarterly basis for at least another couple quarters until it looks like we're out of the woods here, hopefully. Um, so maybe through the first half of next year, you're on a quarterly basis. Some uh, organizations can do it on a monthly basis, but the key is this is the plan for this, this period and don't be afraid to change it for the next period. Um, we talked earlier, organizations are very reluctant to change the sales compensation plan. You have to change it now and you may have to change it again in a few months. That's just the times we're in, we're in and hopefully we'll get through this um, in a shorter period of time, not longer. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So as we as we get towards the end of our time together, Steve, just tell us a bit about you. We've heard a lot about your expertise, but what about you? What about me? OK, I guess the most important things about me is, is, is like everybody else. It's, it's family. I've got four uh, wonderful little grandsons um, and that's the whole focus is, uh, is, you know, where are they and what are they doing and how can I jump into that? So I spend a lot of time with the family, um, play tennis when I can, bike when I can. You know, that importance of family, that importance of well-being and, and looking yeah. after yourself, getting those positive endorphins going. It's been a, a very common thread as we go as we go forward. Yeah, it seems like everybody's kind of well, not used to it, but we're, we're getting used to it. We're, we're not going as crazy as we used to be. We've got ways of, you know, capitalizing on the fact that we are working out of our house. We can take a break and work out a lot easier than if we were in an office or on the road. It's, you know, it's kind of a a little bit, little bit of a pain in the ass to do that, but you hear you can just take a break and work out or well, do anything else. The overused words you talked about earlier it just goes to show how agile humans can be. Yeah. You know, yeah. we adapt to situations, and uh, um, you know, let's suppose you said six months from now we're adapting back to whatever we'll be doing then. So yeah, but Steve, I appreciate you taking the time. It's been a fascinating chat. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. And for everybody else, I think we started with a question: um, How do uh, to, you know to what extent do comp plans affect sales people's behaviour? And Steve's clearly articulated it really does. You know, if you get it right, it can drive the right kind of behaviours, the right kind of results. If you get it wrong, or you have the wrong sales management processes in place, it can drive the wrong kind of results. So, Steve, thanks again. Look after yourself. Thank you. Enjoy and thanks. Time. Yeah, Bye. and thank you all. We'll see you again very soon on another chat with Matt. Thank you.